I want to talk about car control, understeer and oversteer. The new filtering method. So I was reading an article from Car and Driver about the S2000 CR and they said it has a ton of understeer. The reality of that is it's not true, number one. And the second thing is they need to modify their driving style. And I want to talk about how you can make any car understeer or oversteer. So the driver of that car, when he's writing the review, is probably doing something wrong and he wasn't really understanding what's going on. And so I want to explain exactly what's going on. So the first thing is that I want to talk about, there's this myth that you need to exceed the limit at the racetrack to find the limit, and that is not true at all. And now I want to talk about some terms we use to define the attitude of the car on the racetrack. Uh, first, we talk about yaw. Now, yaw angle is the direction the car is traveling relative to the direction of the car. So we have a car here. An example of a big yaw angle would be a car that's drifting. It's going sideways pretty much like this. Whee! and uh, that's a large yaw angle. Now the slip angle refers to the tire and that's the direction of the tire relative to the direction that the tire is traveling. And we use slip angle of the front and the rear tires to define understeer and oversteer. And this is actually the correct way to do it. So let's go to this board. We have understeer up here. We have oversteer over here. I'm going to show you with video how I got the S2000CR to do both. What I want to do here, this is a drawing. I'm not good at drawing, sorry about that. Here is the car, this block right here is the car, and these are the wheels, and these are the directions of the wheels. And so right here, you can see the wheels are pointing this way, but the car is traveling this way. So we have a large slip angle right here on the front tires. The rear tires have a very tiny slip angle. Because the front tires have a larger slip angle than the rear tires, we define that as understeer. Uh, this is a classic case of understeer. I encountered it at the hairpin at Buttonwillow. Let's talk about oversteer. Oversteer, you can see from this car, the car is going off the driving line sideways, going around the corner, uh, sort of drifting. The slip angle on the rear tires is large and the slip angle on the front tires is not large, and that's because we're counter steering as we go through the corner. I will throw up a clip of that. Okay, so that's oversteer. Both of these conditions are not fast. Hollywood would have us believe that going sideways around a corner is actually fast, but it's just not. So the ideal thing to do here is to match the front and the rear slip angles, which is what I do on the racetrack. That's how I get my best times. This involves many things, altering my driving style, altering the driving line. It's a dynamic thing. It changes throughout the corners, especially with the S2000 with the arrow, because at higher speeds, it behaves differently than at lower speeds. So when I'm going through the hairpin, I get some understeer. I have to take a different line and come out wide as I'm accelerating out of that corner in order to keep the slip angles matching on the front and the rear of the car. And that is how I squeezed out my fastest lap time. And so that is it. That is the basic thing you have to understand about understeer and oversteer. You can really get any car to understeer or oversteer. There are lots of things you can do with the car controls. So that is it for now. Thank you guys for watching and enjoy your car.